Am I wrong for calling my sister's husband useless? My 17 female sister, 34 female, called me saying that her work had an emergency and she needed to get there ASAP and needed me to watch her kids because no one else can. I rushed over there just to find her husband locked in his game room playing video games. I asked her why she called me over if he was home and she said he didn't want to babysit because it was his only day off. Sister left and I started hanging with the kids. I was changing the baby's diaper and the other kids wanted a snack. I told them to ask their dad to make it for them because the baby had a blowout and it was going to take me a while to clean him up. Well, their dad sent them back upstairs and told them to ask me again. After cleaning the baby up, I made the kids a snack and their dad came out to eat and told me not to let the kids interrupt him on his day off. By the way, he works part-time from home six days a week. I kind of snapped at him and told him it was my day off too and that he's a useless fucking father and husband if his wife has to rely on her teenage sister rather than her own husband. He started telling me I was disrespectful and didn't understand how hard parenting is. And I told him he clearly doesn't understand how hard it is either since he considers parenting his own children babysitting. He ended up kicking me out and apparently my sister was forced to come home because he told her she needed to figure it out since I'm her sister. I feel like I may have been the asshole because my sister is mad at me, her husband is mad at me, my mom is mad at me for causing drama, but my dad thinks it's funny and agrees with me. I definitely didn't need to call him names, but I just hate this guy so much. We have argued about things in the past as well, so we already don't have a great relationship. My sister is saying I need to apologize to him and he is threatening to never let me in the kids' lives if I keep disrespecting him. So, am I the asshole here? For everyone that has asked, no, he does not take care of the kids normally. My sister takes him to daycare during the day and then picks him up on her way home. She is the breadwinner and primary caretaker. Also, I got a few questions of, does she pay you? Not exactly, but she will randomly take me on expensive shopping sprees and will regularly buy things from my Amazon wishlist instead. Am I the a-hole for kicking my brother-in-law out after he referred to himself as the father of my child? Let me explain. I'm a 30-year-old female and my wife is a 29-year-old female. We welcomed our son into the world a year ago and both of our families are very accepting of us, but my wife's family has this weird obsession with passing on the family genes. So this made adopting out of the question very early on. My wife and I always wanted to start a family, but things got difficult when my wife found out that she was infertile. We knew that her family would be understanding, but I am terrified of pregnancy. My biological mom died in childbirth, which has led me to believe that I wouldn't hold a pregnancy very well. After a few months of brainstorming, my mother-in-law suggested that we do IVF, using my eggs, my brother-in-law's sperm, and let my wife carry the baby. Even though I was skeptical, I gave in because the plant hit all the marks. Her family got to pass on the genes, and my wife and I got to start a family. Plus, I didn't want to carry the baby. We went through extensive counseling and therapy to make sure everyone was on the same page and could handle it, and everything went great. My wife loved being pregnant, aside from the morning sickness, and we were overjoyed to welcome our new baby boy in the winter. But a problem arose when we were preparing for my son's first birthday when my brother-in-law made a comment about how he should get a say in the planning as the child's father. I was shocked, I cringed, and I told him he wasn't. And told him that he was just providing a piece of him, and he looked me in the eye and said, yeah, so he's our child. My wife's jaw dropped and my mother-in-law wasn't making eye contact. I kicked him out of the house and told him that he couldn't come back until he apologized. But he got angry, which made my wife start to cry. She has always struggled with self-esteem, and this infertility really took a toll on her. For months, I've had to reassure her and tell her what an amazing mom she is. My sister-in-law later that day called me the B-word, and I argued that my brother-in-law had no right saying any of that. But she kept yelling, so my wife and I had to cut off contact with her family. Brother-in-law signed away all of his rights and agreed multiple times he's just an uncle. But am I in the wrong for waiting for him to apologize? My best friend always projects her insecurities onto me. Should I break up with her? My best friend and I have known each other for exactly two years. We met in college and hit it off right away. We're both Latinas and we come from really big families. I have two other sisters and we get along really well. We always hype each other up and have each other's backs. A few months after I started my friendship with my best friend, let's call her Lucia. Lucia started showing some really toxic qualities. Sometimes I think I'm just reading too much into it or overreacting. So you let me know. First of all, she would start talking bad about my sisters in front of me. She would make comments like, wow, your sister's gained weight or wow your sister has cellulite when she first did this i would just defend my sisters but then i realized that that just made her want to keep talking more trash so if she ever said anything about my sisters i wouldn't say anything at the time our friendship started i had a really big crush on this guy he and i went to the same gym and i never had the courage to speak to him not until my sister convinced me to i finally spoke to him at the gym and we actually hit it off we would work out together every now and then and he finally asked me out on a date the day of our date my best friend came over to my house and while i was getting ready she started saying really weird things at first she told me that i should should wash my hair because it looked oily. I told her my hair was freshly washed. 
When I looked at myself in the mirror, I could see her reflection and she just rolled her eyes at me. This is when things started clicking. Part two is up. My best friend projects her insecurities on me. Should I break up with her? I could see through the mirror that she had rolled her eyes at me. Then she started making other comments about my appearance. Mind you, I'm getting ready for a date. When I showed her the outfit that I was going to wear, she said it was too revealing and that I would probably scare him off. Wasn't even revealing. It just showed my legs. It was a cute sundress with a cardigan on top. I told her I thought I looked cute. And then she said, Aya tu amiga. As I'm finishing up my hair and my makeup, she says, Wow, you're going to wear that much makeup? But the way she said it was so aggressive, I actually took off the lipstick I was wearing. Instead, I just put on lip balm. I looked at her and she had a smile on her face. It was like she was happy she finally got to me. The date went really well and he actually turned into my boyfriend a few weeks later. And guess what? My best friend started judging everything about him. The first time she met him, she started saying, wow, I think he's balding, which he isn't. And even if he was, I wouldn't care. She also started making comments about him staring at other girls, something I never even noticed that he did. And I would know I'm with him all the time. It's like she was trying to plant all these insecurities in my head. One day, Lucia and my boyfriend and I are in his car. We were heading to the movie theaters when Lucia says, wow, you put on way too much perfume. It's giving me a headache. That's when my boyfriend told her that if it bothered her that much, she should just go home. And out of nowhere, Lucia swung her fist at him. She actually tried to attack him. Part three is up. My best friend always projects her insecurities on me. Should I break up with her? That's when she started swinging at my boyfriend. Luckily, I yelled at her and she stopped. It's like she was upset at me for yelling at her for trying to hit my boyfriend. That's when my boyfriend kicked her out of the car and I asked him to calm down. I got out of the car with Lucia and asked her to calm down. That's when she told me that I needed to break up with him and that he was clearly abusive. I told her he was just defending me. Then she said, he doesn't need to defend you. I'm only saying this because I care about you. Then she called herself an Uber and left. My boyfriend and I went to the movie theaters and we had a really nice night. Here's some more examples of her projecting on me. While we were getting ready for a friend's birthday party, she started pointing out some stuff on my body. She said, your elbows are really dark. You need to fix that. Another time I decided to get some highlights and she said they looked horrible on me. She said I looked like a JLo wannabe. Luckily, I didn't care and I just kept the highlights. Mind you, two months later, she got the exact same highlights. Now, I know that she cares about me because she does have my back. She'll help me with anything I need, honestly. And I wonder if I'm overreacting, but I don't think so. I just don't know how to tell her that she's toxic and she makes me feel bad what should i do crime fanatic friday part two the girl tortured by an entire neighborhood after holding 16 year old sylvia likens captive in the basement gertrude benazuski's heinous acts continued at a greater rate Gertrude, her seven children, and the neighborhood kids would help Gertrude restrain Sylvia as she received scalding hot baths and cuts, where Gertrude would rub salt into her wounds and sores. On October 23rd, they bred in her stomach with a hot needle, saying, I'm a prostitute and proud of it. Once finished, Gertrude's 10-year-old daughter tried to brand Sylvia's left breast with a heated bolt that had an S on it. Sylvia knew that she was dying and even told her younger sister that she didn't have long to live. She tried to escape on October 25th but was caught by Gertrude before she made it to the door. The final day of Sylvia's life was different than the previous months. She was delirious and couldn't speak. She was fully incontinent and Gertrude's 12-year-old old boy hosed her down with cold water while laughing at her. Even in her weakened state, she made one final attempt at escaping before Gertrude caught her at the basement door and stomped on her head. In her last hours, she was given a warm bubble bath, changed into clean clothes, and laid on the mattress. She closed her eyes and never opened them again. Days earlier, Gertrude forced Sylvia to write a letter claiming that she had run away and the boys from the neighborhood were her torturers. Her last attempt at deflecting any blame was to cover Sylvia's body in rubbing alcohol. When police arrived, Gertrude told them that Sylvia had returned home in her bloody and dying state and that she had been trying to nurse her. Everyone was questioned, but no one was talking. No one except Sylvia's 15-year-old sister, Jenny. She told police, you get me out of here and I'll tell you everything. Gertrude, five of her children, and five of the neighborhood kids were all arrested for Sylvia's murder. Her autopsy showed 150 wounds, some down to the bone, and she had also bitten through her lips when she died, almost detaching it from her face. Gertrude and her eldest daughter, Paula, were sentenced to life in prison. However, both of them were released on parole later on. They both changed their names and went on to lead new lives, but Gertrude died in 1990 of lung cancer. Jenny, Sylvia's sister, went on to marry and have two children of her own. She spent years on medication due to anxiety from watching her sister's torture and murder. Two movies have been made based on Sylvia Likens' story. One called An American Crime and the other called The Girl Next Door. That's actually how I heard about this case. Both movies are heartbreaking though, so please take caution when watching. Because of this case, if anyone sees any type of child abuse in the state of Indiana, they are required by law to report it.